session in the hydrostatics introduction. Uh, as mentioned in the previous video, we will continue from the YouTube uh, experiment. Uh, we know uh, from a YouTube, we can determine the density of an unknown uh, liquid and uh, using a standard solution. So for the standard solution, we are using water here. So first we have to pour the water, which is uh, the standard solution here. So after pouring the water, it will stay at the same level in the YouTube initially. Then uh, uh, we are using a liquid uh, lesser than the density of the water. We are assuming the density of the uh, liquid is uh, lesser. So if it is lesser, uh, when we are pouring it into one arm, uh, there will be a height variation in the uh, water column. Uh, here, when the new liquid is poured, so let's say it is poured up to this level. So here there would be a variation in the water level. It would trace up, not to the extent, to the same level, but somewhere here. So if they are equal liquids, same liquids, it will raise to the same amount or else it will uh, raise to a different level. So in this case, this liquid which is marked in red color should be uh, less in density of the liquid which is in the bottom. So if it is a high density liquid, it starts to move down and it separates the water column into two portions. Where it, it is difficult to analyze. Here we know, uh, I'll assume this uh, height as HP, I'll take it as paraffin, and this water level as HW, and I'll mark this point as A and this point as B. Both are open to atmosphere, so here there would be an atmospheric pressure phi, here also an atmospheric pressure phi. So pressure at A would be, PA would be pi plus HP rho P into G. So we have seen this relationship of liquid pressure already. And pressure at B would be equal to pi plus HW plus rho w into rho W into G. So this liquid is at rest. So pressure at same levels would be equal. So therefore PA would be equal to PB. So when, e when you equal this, you can get as HP into rho P is equal to HW into rho W. If we do it as an laboratory practical, uh, we can change HP independently. You can pour additional liquids and you can observe the variation of HW. So here this would be the Y dependent variable and this would be the independent variable. So you can change this by dividing this by rho w this side. So rho w would be equal to, so hw would be equal to rho p over rho w into hp. So here you can draw a graph in the format of y equal mx. So this would be hp and this would be hw. So you will get a graph. So from the gradient, you can find the relative density of this liquid because rho p by rho w is the relative density and if you multiply by the standard uh, value of the uh, density of water, you can find the density of that particular liquid. This is a simple experiment to find the density or the relative density of a liquid. So there is a similar experiment uh, which can be done. So that is the hair apparatus. So we will see that also. In the hair apparatus, the setup is a bit different. Same concept, but the setup is a bit different. So we use two liquid baths. Two liquid baths. Here you use the standard solution. Let's say this is water. And here, uh, let's say the liquid with uh, unknown density. This is a liquid with unknown density. So the hair separatus has two tubes which is immersed here and these two tubes are connected 
and here we have an opening so either we can connect this to a vacuum pump with a tap or we can just suck it out with a suck it out there right here when you pull out the air and close the tap there will be a water raise or the liquid will raise up here and the water will also raise up here so let's say the water raised to a level of this level and the liquid of this here it uh, raises to a level of this here right so as both the liquids are now after sucking out the air and closing the tap so this would be in a static equilibrium so the pressure at this point x would be equal to pressure at this point y and pressure at this point B would be equal to pressure at this point A. So since X and A are open to atmosphere, so PA and PX are both to open to atmosphere, so that would be equal to 5. And PX would be equal to PY and PB would be equal to uh, PA. Right? So since PX and PA both are equal since Px and Pa both are equal to pi we can relate from these two equations that Pb is equal to Py so now we have to find what is Pb and what is Py so here to write Pb Pb will take this height as Hw so Hl height of liquid and this height as Hw height of water so here this would be equal to, we don't know what is the pressure inside this column, let's take that pressure as P, right? Since we have suck out some air, there would be a pressure variation here that is equal along this area and this, that would also act on PB. So let's take that pressure as P here and this pressure as P here. So here PB can be written as, I'll write it down, PB can be written as P plus H dub HL rho L into G that is equal to PY which is equal to P plus HW into uh, rho W into G. So if you see this relationship it is similar to what we get in YouTube but the procedure is somewhat different right. So again you can uh, get a relationship like this that is H, HW which w equal to rho l by rho w into hl so again by removing the r you can vary the height of this water column sorry this liquid column and find the respective how height of water and find the relative density of the liquid and uh, you can get the standard density also the advantage in the hair apparatus is you can find the density of uh, two liquids that can mix. So, for example, uh, now in YouTube, you can't uh, find the density of alcohol because it mix with water. The standard ethanol mix with water. So here you can find that. So there is a there is no interaction between two liquids which happens in YouTube. So there are some advantages and disadvantages for both the apparatus. So here uh, we should uh, uh, see another thing if we are performing this in laboratory we typically use a needle here we place it like this here and uh, we measure we use rubber band to fix this needle in both the columns and we measure this height separately and we measure this height separately. So here measuring this height is a bit difficult because there's a, the, the container is in between. So we first place a needle such that it touches that water surface, then place that, then after removing the apparatus, we measure the height from here to here. So before removing, we should keep in mind we have to higher, measure the height from this rubber band to the bottom of the mixers. So this should be measured before removing the apparatus, this should be measured 
after removing the apparatus, then only we can find the height of liquid and height of water. The same procedure is carried in this side also. Here also we fix a rubber band and do the same thing because the container is in between, so you can't see this uh, water level correctly. So this is not necessary for our university level, but the fundamentals are necessary when it comes to the higher studies, right? Now, this uh, the next thing is a bit a tricky question, which uh, is an A level past paper question. It's a simple question. So here there is a container with a liquid at rest. Now this container is accelerated with an acceleration of A, so the water level changes in this manner. So the water level changes in this manner. So now this is the water level. So the, now the question is, what is this angle? The question is asked. This is the angle, this is the question. There are two methods to do this question. Right? First we will do it in the proper manner, so I will take this height as H2 and this one as H1. So we can find the pressure at this point and the pressure at this point. So here I will take it as 2 and here the 1. So P1 would be equal to pi plus H1 rho G. So P2 would be equal to pi plus H2 rho G. So here there is, we know when there is a pressure difference, there will be a force acting on that liquid. So, so how to find, I will take a water column from here. So, so small water column, uh, like a cylinder like thing, right. So we, I, let's assume this area as A. So if we know the pressure by multiplying by A, we can find the force. And after applying F equal MA in this direction, so we can write as so here the force would be acting in this direction, here the force would be in this direction. So we can write as P2A minus P1A would be equal to mass of this cylinder. So I will take this length as L. So mass would be volume A into L into density. So that is mass into acceleration A. So P2 minus P1. P2 minus P1 would be equal to H1 sorry h2 minus h1 into rho g into a that is equal to a l rho into a so here this capital a and capital a cancels out rho and rho cancels out so h2 minus h1 so h2 minus h1 this height difference i will assume it as h so this is h into g would be equal to a into l so h over l h by l h by l that is equal to a over g so h by l is tan theta so that is theta is equal to tan inverse a by g this is the standard method to do this question but this is an mcq question in a level paper so the mcq idea is very simple so that is according to the relative acceleration part so now you can just simply observe this. When the water, the container is moved in the right direction with an acceleration of A, the water column will experience an acceleration of A in the left direction. So you can simply relate this to yourselves. Now let's say you are moving in a vehicle and you are accelerating the vehicle uh, by a certain acceleration. Uh, in the forward direction. You people will uh, feel an acceleration in the backward direction pushing you all to the seat. So that is the simple idea here. And there will be a gravitational acceleration G. Right? And the resultant would be perpendicular to this surface. So if the resultant is not perpendicular to this surface, there will be still change in this surface. So once the this resultant is perpendicular, the cost component becomes zero. So there won't be any change in this surface. That is the time where this surface becomes static. So you have to understand 
uh, the 90 degree concept. So if this is theta, this angle would be again theta because this is 90 minus theta and again this is theta. So simply here, using tan theta, you can write it as a by g. So tan theta would be equal to a divided by g. So theta is tan minus a by g. So this is a simple concept. So I wanted to emphasize this because the fundamental is uh, very necessary when it comes to our higher studies because we, so as civil engineers without the foundation we can't be uh, erect a building right so the a level basics are very much necessary right so next we will see some basic principles uh, which we are uh, we need so one is the pascal principle so according to the pascal principle we know pressure in a liquid along a liquid would be equal so let's say it's just different areas here the areas here there is a liquid here there is a liquid here you are applying a force f1 here you are applying a force f2 here area is a1 here area is a2 so the pressure along this fluid is completely filled with fluid the pressure along this fluid is equal that is the Pascal's principle. So here, if it is P1, would be equal to P2. So P1 can be written as F1 over A1, that is equal to F2 over A2. So F1 into A2 is equal to F2 into A1. So this is the Pascal's uh, equation. So not is the standard equation we are deriving from the Pascal's principle. So this is a simple thing which we are using in hydraulic jacks brake pedals in the vehicles and so and so. So the next principle is the Archimedes principle, the famous uh, Archimedes principle that is uh, the weight, the upthrust acting on the fluid on a particular solid which is completely immersed or partially immersed is equal to the weight of the water that is displaced. So that is the Archimedes. Principle. If you want to prove that theoretically, so let's take a cylindrical object, right? Uh, I'll assume the force acting on here is P1A and here it is P2A. So this the height is H. So the area is A. So the upthrust is the resultant force acting from the pressure. The upthrust is P2A minus P1A. Right? So the P2 minus P1 into A. So P2 minus P1 is the pressure caused by this height, this H rho G into A. Right? So the volume displaced, so if it is completely immersed, the volume displaced would be, volume would be A into H. So the weight would be, uh, mass would be uh, AH rho and the weight W would be AH g so if you see both these relationships so that is equal when the cylinder is completely immersed it's completely immersed in a liquid so i'm just considering a particular situation uh, if you want to do this in a practical manner so we have to take a spring balance a simple spring balance so this is a spring balance you have to hang a object right and we need a certain particular container with an outlet and we need another container to collect the displaced water the water should be filled up to this level so here we can immerse this object either completely or partially see the variation in the uh, scale and collect the water carefully then after measuring the height and finding the difference you can see that the upthrust and the uh, weight display, the weight of the displaced water would be equal this is the laboratory manner uh, to find to just see whether the archimedes principle is valid or not so now as we know what is uh, upthrust uh, we can see what is center of buoyancy so when you take an object and uh, immerse it in a container with fluid, so we know already what is center of gravity. Center of gravity is uh, 
are the symmetric axis which are here the center of gravity g the center of buoyancy is we are upthrust x so here the weight x w so the upthrust x within this portion so this is the only immersed portion so the upthrust would be here so here i am drawing a symmetric point so here would be the upthrust so this we mark it as b in a levels so here would be the point where the upthrust x u so central point is the point where upthrust x so here that is only considered for the immersed portion so if you consider this figure right uh, there are three types of equilibrium right so we have seen that in uh, in the mechanics part in a level right so simply we draw and figure like this so let's take a ball which is here another one is here another one is here so if you displace this blows give a very small force it moves slightly and stays in the same level so here this is in neutral equilibrium if you displace this one it again ret returns to its initial position here it stays in same level but not to the initial position here it comes to the initial position so it is stable equilibrium here if you give a small displacement it either falls in this side or this side so this it can't return to its initial position so it is unstable equilibrium so we have seen these three equilibriums so this can be explained in hydrostatics also using center of gravity and center of buoyancy so let's take an object now this is completely immersed so both the center of gravity g and b would be in the same point so if you give a displacement small rotation or whatever it is it rotates and stays in that same position so that is neutral equilibrium so this would be the neutral equilibrium question so when we give a particular oscillation here so when you give a particular oscillation here it oscillates in this manner and comes back to the same state so it in the stable equilibrium and uh, when it comes to unstable equilibrium i'm just placing this upside down and the center of gravity would be higher and center of buoyancy would be lower so in the unstable equilibrium if you give a small displacement it comes back to the other position this position but it can't return back to this position so it is in unstable equilibrium so these are the uh, stable equilibrium conditions and unstable and neutral equilibrium conditions and uh, this height is the metacentric height which is very uh, this part this is very much uh, useful when designing ships and if it is higher there would be and uh, variation in the periodic oscillation time so these are highly analyzed by mechanical engineering people when designing ships and marine people because if the ship is very much oscillating still it would be stable but uh, the passengers would be experiencing nausea uh, so and it would be uncomfortable so these are the states of equilibrium and here furthermore i want to emphasize the sinking and floating part sinking and floating so if a object has to sink the object density should be greater than the liquid density and if it has to float the object density should be less than the liquid density so that part it uh, relies on density of the weight of uh, volume or other parameters uh, so, so the, the density is plays a major role over there uh, and uh, in the following video i'll uh, meet you all with some questions and uh, if you have any questions or doubts or for the sections we have to discuss uh, post it down in the comments I hope this found this just brief introduction to these uh, fundamentals would be useful to you all. Uh, so I think the fundamentals are much important because without the foundation, so the higher studies won't be doing anything to us. Um, so let's meet up in the next video.